Discovering Hope in the Valley. Lamentations 3, we read, I said my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Remembering my affliction and my misery, the wormwood and gall, my soul has them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. This I recall to my mind, therefore, have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Jeremiah was known as the weeping prophet. He did not view his world through rose-colored glasses. He mourned, he grieved, he wept, and he prayed. Earnestly, he prayed for his world to change, his circumstances to improve, and for the help of Almighty God in the most desperate situation. He lived in a world defined by tragedy, loss, and failure. His people and their culture were devastated by the consequences of their sin. Sounds a lot like our present world. Our nation, like the children of Israel, have departed from the Lord. America has departed from holiness, righteousness, and the very principles of God that our country was founded on. I think about the story of Hosea the faithful and upright prophet whom God asked to go and marry the harlot Gomer, a known prostitute and adulteress. She represented the children of Israel and Hosea, he represented the Lord. The Lord said, go and make a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms for the land hath committed great whoredom departing from the Lord. So he took a wife and she conceived a son whose name was to be called Jezreel. And it shall come to pass at that day, I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel, meaning God will sow. God will sow in the valley. In life, there are valleys, there are hills, and there are plains. We live on the plains but often we go through valleys. I'm gonna tell you five facts about valleys. Number one, valleys, they're inevitable. They're going to happen, so you might as well count on it. You have either come out of valley, you're in one right now, or you're heading toward one. That's just life. Valleys happen throughout life. And Jesus, he was very realistic when he told us, in the world, you will have trouble. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. It is going to happen. You're going to have difficulty. You're going to have disappointment and discouragement. There will be times of suffering and sorrow and sickness. There will be times of frustration, failure, and fatigue. They are a normal part of our valley experiences. Number two, Valleys, they're unpredictable. You can't plan a time for them or schedule the valleys. They always come unexpected and they're not convenient. They come when you don't have time for them or when you're unprepared for them and they come at the worst possible time. Valleys would be great if we could schedule our next crisis, but we know life, it doesn't work that way. You can be having a great day and suddenly a phone call, a text, a routine checkup at the doctor, a news broadcast, or an accident could change everything in just a moment. Jeremiah said it like this, in an instant, my tents are destroyed. My shelter falls in a moment. We, we often don't know when or how Yet we know when we arrive, this isn't where I want to be. Number three, and this is good news, valleys are temporary. Say, thank you, God. Valleys don't last. They have an end. 
They are not a permanent location. It's not a place you stay your entire life. It's something you go through. Like David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's not meant to be camped in. It's meant to be walked through. Valleys don't come into your life to stay. They come to pass. Number four, valleys are impartial. No one is insulated from pain and sorrow. No one gets to skate through life problem free. Everyone has problems. Good people, bad people. It rains on the just and the unjust. Problems, trials, difficulties, disturbances, downtimes, and depression, they come to all people. No partiality, no exemptions. Number five, valleys are purposeful. God has a reason for taking you through the valleys. Whether it's doubt, depression, discouragement, defeat, or even death, he has a reason for it. There are financial valleys, emotional valleys, relational valleys, and all kinds of trials and tribulations. It is not an accident. God is intentional about everything. He makes no mistakes. He will build your faith in the valleys of life. Even the little problems and irritations have a purpose. They strengthen and develop our character. We glory in tribulations knowing that tribulations work patience and patience experience and experience hope. There is hope in the valley. And I will give her vineyards from thence and the valley of Acre for a door of hope. And she shall sing therein as the days of her youth and as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt. A door of hope in the valley of Acre. The valley of Acre was where Achan was slain for his trespasses during the battle of Jericho. Remember, he was the one who hid the gold and silver and the Babylonian garment instead of destroying all of it as he was instructed. So this valley represents disobedience and death. But God was saying to Hosea and to the children of Israel, I will take your valley of defeat and trouble and turn it into victory. I will take where you have stumbled and fallen, where you have suffered and sinned and failed, and I will give you an open door, a way of escape, a way out of the valley. Hope is the way of escape from the valley. Hope is our victory. Not wishes, not optimism, but hope that comes from knowing the goodness, the faithfulness, and the mercies of our God. In Lamentations chapter 3, Jeremiah is describing his sorrow and misery. But listen to what happens in the middle of Jeremiah's discourse. I am the one who has seen the afflictions that come from the rod of the Lord's anger. He has led me into darkness, shutting out all light. He has turned his hand against me again and again all day long. He has made my skin and flesh grow old. He has broken my bones. He has besieged and surrounded me with anguish and distress. He's buried me in a dark place like those long dead. He has walled me in and I cannot escape. He has bound me in heavy chains. And though I cry and shout, he has shut out my prayers. He has blocked my way with a high stone wall. He has made my road crooked. He is hidden like a bear or a lion waiting to attack me. He has dragged me off the path and torn me in pieces, leaving me helpless and devastated. He has drawn his bow and made me a target for his arrows. He shot his arrows deep into my heart. My own people laugh at me. All day long they sing their mocking songs. He has filled me with bitterness and given me a bitter cup of sorrow to drink. He's made me chew on gravel. He has rolled me in dust. Peace has been stripped away and I have forgotten what prosperity is. I cry out, my splendor is gone. Everything I had hoped for from the Lord is lost. The thought of my suffering and homelessness is beyond 
bitter words. I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. But here it is. Listen to this. Yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. Not the devastation, not the problems or the circumstances, but what he remembered, what he recalled to his mind is of the Lord's mercies and that his compassions fail not. Do you see the turning point? Do you feel the shift? The transition from despair to hope was found when he remembered the goodness of God. When he stopped thinking about the heartache for a moment, when he stopped thinking about the struggle and instead began to remember the faithfulness and the goodness, the mercy and compassion of God. Remembering brings hope and hope is the door. Jesus Christ is the door. He is our hope. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus is where each of our lives begin, and he is the one we will stand before in the end. He is God of the mountain. He is God of the valley, acquainted with sorrow, and he understands our grief. He is loving and willing to forgive. He is our hope for all eternity. Remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. The Lord is my inheritance. He is our hope. 